Hey guys, welcome to the first match of the losers game between Scut and Advil. Scut, even though having the Zerg tag, is in fact playing Terran bottom right hand corner. As this is, I have not seen a lot of Terran players with this color, but it's kind of the mustard yellow, and usually I'm kind of like, hey, that color yellow, but it actually looks kind of fetching, I think, on that command center going up against. And I know the colors are close, but I think I'm going to stick with it because I kind of like the color schematic, especially with the names in the upper right. This is on Neo Sulfid, TVT. If I recall, Three Factory Vulture tends to be the preferred build for most Terran on this map. We'll see if we end up with any variation on that. I'm wondering if Scott's thinking about doing a little bit of uh, cheesing. We actually, it's very nice actually, the player's letting us know their MMR straight out in chat. If you're curious, by the way, Hostile League tends to range between as low as 1700, but as high as uh, 2000, depending on the season. I feel like last season it was, for some reason, a little bit higher than usual. But regardless, solid players. Usually B to A range. Yeah, this season, the I'm wondering if it's like a post-COVID, everybody getting back to work effect or what, but the MMRs were a little bit uh, more depressed this season in comparison to last season. A few, a few fewer participants. We still have some good ones overall. First scout for Advil. It's not to say these players are shabby at all. Kind of makes me excited to cast Chobo League even more because that means there's going to be even more chaos down there. A little bit of SCV harassment, actually forcing an SCV off the line. I like seeing SCV mix it up. Refinery being grabbed. We have the refinery constructed on the opposite side as well. Initial SCV scout looks like it is going to go to the north for scout, so going to get first scout as well. Advil trying to do what he can. Three SCV in gas. Delayed SCV in gas to the north. Barracks constructed. Let's see if there's going to be a full seal here. It is. Looks like not. So that SCV should be able to sneak in. Because of that trade off, it looks like this barracks. Nice uh, distraction by Advil. Slowing down that barracks a smidge. And also, this scouting SCV has basically bought some free mining time, and you can see it in the worker count where. Dancing that SCV and having it being chased has reduced the mineral on the opposite end. Factory being constructed. SCV going to make its way out. Small advantages. Advil pocketing this SCV deep in the corner at the natural expansion to try to get confirmation as to whether it's going to be one factory into expand. We do have a single SCV now in gas, which leads me to believe it is going to be an attempt at one factory into expand. Same story, opposite corner. And the barracks lifting up after the marine constructed and scut. Look at that. SCV spots. Pays for it with its life, or does it? Scoots out the corner with just two health. What a hero. Heading towards the hills now. That is a... An elite SCV right there. Someone repair it when it gets home. Barracks floating out for both players. Command center constructing, but good pieces of information right there. Machine shop being dropped. We do see a second SCV in position to go ahead to increase the factory count for two. I'm curious if you're going to see an armory plop down for Scott to go for more Goliath Siege Tank defense, or if we are going to see an additional factory right now, resources growing, maybe waiting to see what's on the opposite end, and a Marine dying on the front, the Vulture trying to get some disruption, is able to kill that SCV, which will delay that command center, and able to sneak in, confirm, ooh, might even be able to halt that factory a bit. So two SCV kills, two critical SCV kills, Slowing down both the command center and the factory follow-up. Giving Scott a bit of an advantage, however. There were a lot of dead resources in between. This is a much delayed second factory. 
And that's a third factory, yeah, for three factory vulture and some mines. So Advil is going to have a big vulture count to follow this up. Currently has a huge vulture advantage and has the information to see that there's no defensive vultures on the opposite end, only a single siege tank. So those vultures can just steamroll into that natural expansion, pick off a lot of SCVs and the siege tank wouldn't be able to kill them rapidly enough to negate the economic damage. Is he just gonna wait for the four? Yeah, waiting for more to group up. Upgrading speed as well. They're on their way. Ooh, and siege the tank up, which means might have an initial shot from the first vulture. Okay, with two siege tanks out, a little bit better of a defensive situation. This tank needs to remain on siege, however. Looks like Advil going to back out. Lost the window timing, it looks like. And is just going to settle for defensive mines outside that natural expansion. Starport being constructed with mines. So potential drop follow-up from Scut, realizing that he's going to get a bit sealed in here. Barracks camped out over that natural expansion to check SCV saturation on location. Still nothing but vultures being constructed. However, three siege tanks now out on the front for Scott to help negate the vulture advantage. And this is double machine shot pumping nothing but siege tank as well. So as long as there's decent intersperse of unsieged tanks, should be fine. I always wonder how Marines feel like when they're on the duty of like, you gotta, okay, see that gigantic, it's like the Chinese weather balloon sort of thing. Like you see that barracks up in the sky, the big building that's just floating up there. I want with your gun to, to destroy that building. Just a couple bullets, just bullets at a time. You got infinite ammo. Just take that building down, please. Fourth factory being constructed. One of the more boring jobs potentially in the entire turn workforce. Scott slowly actually protruding out a lot of vultures here. Actually, with the Vulture Swarm, they might be able to swarm those siege tanks. A Wraith production, actually, rather than dropship play to provide superior spotting. Plus one weapons as well. And a fourth and a fifth factory now with double machine shop as well. Advil does need to get a lot of siege tanks out, potentially to catch up in the siege tank race. But I'm almost curious if Scut, once he fields these Wraith, is actually going to try to go for a quick third and a large siege tank spread. Advil's su sizable supply lead, but again, mostly in vultures. Has an SCV out to go ahead and take that inside 12. The Wraith making their way forward. There's no anti-air and no opportunity to have anti-air for a good amount of time. Luckily, that armory was at least in construction here, but these Wraith should be able to get a lot of kills. Let's see if this provokes... A counterattack. The SCV scattering. This is certainly going to hurt Advil's economy. And Scott already had that SCV lead. Armory finished. Looks like at least a Goliath being constructed. Two Goliaths should be sufficient to deal with this. Third Wraith in production. Vulture speed and four factories there. Double armory along that corner. And Scut, despite being down supply, has, at this stage, a superior unit composition and has managed to get a lot of SCV kills. Let's see if that holds out for the long term, because he is able to get this inside 12 a bit more rapidly, the Wraith being guided towards those Goliath. And probably should just exit the battlefield at this stage. It looks like they still want to get additional kills. Pecking away. They're just going to hold out in no man's land. The Goliath going to be in a standoff. Looks like in between. Siege Shakes now grouping up on the high ground. Walking into Siege Tank. I, actually, sorry, this looks like high ground, but it isn't in fact high ground, so I shouldn't call it that. Just know that this isn't an actual high ground, but it is kind of a... It is what it is. Wraith making their way back to go ahead and spot. Still no Goliath on the front, so those Siege Tanks are exposed. Goliath attacking that barracks. Only a single Goliath here. But Wraith are paper airplanes, so getting cleared out. 
additional factories on the front. Advil still has that lead, has the three bases, but ooh, great mines. I think that might have been a self mine drag to wipe that out. So Scut just barreling forward with that siege tank force and going to be able to secure his third. Ooh, loses some siege tanks to the follow up mines. Still has a much superior siege tank army, but sieging right as the vultures are able to get on top of those siege tanks on the front. And actually, the lo I thought those lo I thought for sure at least two more siege tanks were going to get wiped out. Scott with that double machine shop continuously pumping has opened things up. A huge minefield to the south and a single siege tank just watching those units flood across. Supply counts even, but a siege tank advantage for Scott. And he can, is he going to build the command center on site or is he just going to let it fly? It looks like he's actually going to grab the six o'clock location. But the siege tanks holding position in between Advil and his location, that is going to give an opportunity for Advil to get back in this match. However, Advil is going to be down on upgrades because we've got double armory, which is critical in TVT. Plus one weapon's already finished. And it's going to be a while before plus one weapons finishes for Advil. Plus, three machine shops to build siege tanks in a hurry, but siege tank positioning in Scott's favor. And Advil walking into the siege tank lines with Goliath. Able to get a couple shots off, but losing some siege tanks for free, and he needs to really preserve that. Currently with the supply lead and workers. Vultures wandering out using some commsats to try to clear. This is a huge minefield. That's a little excessive, I'm going to say. The Goliath sweeping across. The siege tank's there to support. Oh, the mine's overwhelming here. Trying to poke a little bit forward. Maybe use the marine as bait. Might be able to clear out some lines. This is a very precarious situation. Three machine shops opposite side. A science vessel being constructed. To potentially clear out those mines. Advil trying to establish additional territorial claims along the left-hand battle, uh, battlefront. But Vulture's already able to slip through. Again, still inferior in siege tank number as far as I can tell. But it looks like the positioning a little bit better from Advil has kind of that diagonal siege tank grouping. However, the Vultures are going to get on top of that fresh SCV line inside the 12 o'clock location. Getting free kills. Siege tanks saddling, sidling forward, trying to clear out what's there. Clear out the mines so the SCV can get back in construction. Advil grabbing a fourth base. Looks like four bases already up for Scut. So going to take the economic lead. We'll see if he is able to translate that into additional factories. I hear a lot of Terran talk about how it can be a challenge to construct factories in this base. Right now, it looks like we're seeing a seven count versus the six count on the opposite side. Seventh factory in construction starport as well, which is a bit late because, yeah, that's going to delay plus two weapons even further. And plus one armor has already finished for Scut. It looks like plus two weapons just about to finish. However, Scut getting caught with his pants down. Six o'clock location. SCV's getting obliterated. Counterattack of vultures to the 12 o'clock. They're very quickly battle SCV. Trying to take care of that vulture. The vulture actually in a situation where it might be able to pick off two siege tanks, but a command center for two siege tanks is even trade. Battle SCV falls, fells that vulture there no saturation at the inside three o'clock as well which means advil able to hold economic lead and establish kind of a soft contain you got three siege tanks to the north you've got what looks like five siege tanks to the west plus that six o'clock location denied Granted, if Scut gathers up and attacks any one critical point, he probably could break through. But with four bases rolling, potentially more factories on the way, 
Advil not in a terrible position. Let's see if the dropship scooping up as well as the weapons advantage, the upgrade advantage, I should say, will carry Scut from here. SCV's transferring out to that fourth expansion. Supplies very, very close. Factory being canceled top right as the, with, actually that supply depot needs to be wiped out. That's unfortunate. Ascot walking forward, trying to grab that pure three o'clock location. Having trouble getting his vultures out of his own base, having to lift off, it looks like a factory to make it happen. Like I said, some players have talked about the difficulty sweeping across to the west. Like I was saying, you can just punch through with some concentrated forces at any given location and maybe clear out. And I thought actually that was, I guess there's no siege tank support behind this. So Advil holds across that center line. Scut grouping up with some additional siege tank reinforcements is all of a sudden down 50 supply with all of the scattering that happened in the rear and with the fourth base and mass production. So I don't think the upgrades are going to be sufficient. Another command center being built in the bottom left for Advil, taking a huge economic lead. A lot of siege tanks moving up to group up otherwise. I'm curious what happened to that. Might have missed a drop someplace. Or that dropship just got wiped out somewhere out in space. Wraith are still alive out here as well. I know it. There it is. Waiting for that dropship. So Siege Shanks clearing out the minefield. Looks like they want to make a shot or at least a distractionary attack to that right-hand side. Siege Shanks having some trouble grouping up to deal with that northern flank. Eating some fire as they go. Not the best engagements despite not a lot of siege tank on the opposite side from Advil. Advil being really patient with this and sending, although not pushing the vultures all the way in under the siege tank fire. Looks like that might have just been an A move. Some reinforcements coming from the south. Looks like there's still some Goliaths and vultures there, but a sweep of siege tanks moving in otherwise. And Scut does not have enough, it looks like, to push back against this. Now moving that dropship up. So the six o'clock remains denied. Scott may, might try to grab that three o'clock, but that's coming very, very late. It's still down on supply. Base is established, bottom left. And a drop moving in. It looks like there's, this is a reinforcement point, that drop ship going to die before it's able to evacuate any of its troops, unfortunately. Good situation for Advil. 30 supply ahead, looks like. Main is mined out for both players, although a little bit of resources left, looks like. On Advil side, fourth machine shop down, which means a lot of siege tanks. Mines are gonna see those SCVs making their way bottom left for Scut, so at least he knows there's additional bases in that territory, although I don't know that he can do a lot about it. Siege tanks shelling that three o'clock and Advil now pushing across that northern flank might have enough actually to breach Scut's third not even bothering to siege up plus two weapons no armor upgrade however so Scut is going to have an advantage in that regard so his units both units hitting hard but just a little bit more defense not sufficient though with the overwhelming troop count and that is GG from Scut realizing he was going to lose that base plus he had the additional bases that were up from Advil so game one in Advil's favor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.